Well, it's very, very important to differentiate for patients the difference between true risks and expectations. Expectations of surgery um, are things that happen with every surgery, but typically resolve over time or things that are completely unavoidable. They aren't inherent risks. When most patients come to have micrographic surgery, their greatest concerns surround removal of the cancer, the high cure rate that can be offered, the potential for recurrence of the tumor, scarring, and the appearance of the site. All patients have to remember that there are certain expectations that are gonna happen with every surgical case after reconstruction. The expectations that we always see is that the site itself after surgical repair will typically ooze maybe a little blood for the first 48 hours. That's why surgical dressings are put there. You need surgical dressing to try to eliminate some of that or at least block some of the bleeding while the wound starts to heal. Typically, about three to five days after surgery, there can be an increase in the amount of swelling around the site that you didn't see right away. Often by the seventh day, this starts to resolve, but may take many weeks to go away. There may be bruising around the surgical site, which is also expected, especially if a patient's required to take aspirin or has a blood thinner. Other expectations of surgery is scarring. Anytime a surgical repair is created, there will be a scar. We always hope that that scar is going to be a fine scar and one that's going to be very inconspicuous. In many cases, that's true, but there will always be a scar after surgery. Other expectations of surgery is that that scar or incision site is going to have a certain amount of color, redness during the healing phase that may last up to the better part of about 12 months or more. It does fade with time, so patients have to be patient. It's interesting that they call them patients because very few of them are. Now, after about 18 months, we also see recovery of a lot of the sensory nerve. Now, sensory nerve recovery can happen early on, but it typically happens over 18 months, and patients will get little tingling sensations as their sensory nerves recover. But these are all expectations of surgery. And as long as the patient can literally be patient and relaxed, and hopefully the surgeon can help guide them through that process, that's very manageable. Now, true risks of surgery are different. Risks of surgery are bleeding that's excessive. In other words, not necessarily from the wound edge, but bleeding within the tissues causing a blood collection called a hematoma. This happens rarely, but it's more common on patients on blood thinners. There's a small rate of infection, about 1% to 4% in the head and neck area, but again, that's quite rare and not really typically a problem unless the patient is prone to infections or is a diabetic or is otherwise immunosuppressed. Other issues that we need to worry about on occasion is tissue necrosis or tissue death. That can also happen. And most commonly that happens in scenarios where you we're working with smokers and we have large surgical fields. Smoking itself reduces the caliber of the small blood vessels that supply blood to skin. And when we have to transfer or do complex reconstructions of a surgical site, there may be smaller areas to allow the transfer of that blood. So in a smoker, those risks are higher. Across the board, that risk is still under 5% for all patients. However, as in smokers, it can be as high as 50% in some groups. Other things that are certain risks are abnormal scarring. So scars that become hypertrophic or keloid extend or thicken well beyond the initial surgical field area. That's considered a risk of surgery. And lastly, there can be risks such as permanent damage or numbness to a surgical field where a sensory nerve doesn't recover, or there's, of course, the obvious risk of recurrence of the cancer. Despite how effective micrographic surgery is at removing tumors, there's always a risk of tumor recurrence with any treatment method that's available, even though it's lowest with Mohs surgery.